Hey, welcome back to our chessboard example. We're going to create a simple version of the chess game and then a more complicated one, or we might call it a text version and then a graphical user interface. So what you see on the screen is the first milestone for this assignment. You can see that I've drawn a board and it's asking me for entering a number. So let's say I put in square three, enter, and three, enter, and it says, what kind of piece are you putting on the board? I'm gonna put in the word knight and you can see there that I have all the legal moves for the knight. So the point of this exercise is similar to our car store. I want to separate the classes that hold the values of the board and separate it from the, the interface. So we will create an interface that is a text interface and then later we'll create the graphical user interface. So the emphasis is much the same. However, this is a little more complex than the store app that we did in the previous exercise. This is a two-dimensional uh, grid, and we'll be working with a lot of iteration in for loops to be able to process all of the squares on the grid. So I'm going to stop this application, and let's start a new project to see how this is built. So I'm in Visual Studio. I'm going to File and New Project, and I'm going to choose Console App. So I'm going to name mine as Chessboard Console App, and I'm going to put a 2 after mine since I've already created a Chessboard application in a previous test. So selecting console app, giving it a name, and click OK. Now let's check out what's on the uh, Project Solution Explorer. So over here on the right side you can see that I have program.cs. I want to be able to add a class that has the cell and, an, and the uh, board um, data in, in place. So I'm going to add a new project. Let's go to Solution and right click and choose New Project. I'm going to call this thing a uh, chess uh, class library. It's called the class library there. I'm going to name mine as chessboard model. And I'm putting a two after mine again because this is the second time I've done this project. When we have a chess uh, board, we're going to have to sell, save the uh, cell properties and the whole grid property. So that's what this is going to do. It's going to store the state of our board. I'm going to delete the existing class and then add two new ones. So let's delete class one. Let's right click and choose add a class and I'm going to call this thing cell. And so I'm selecting class and it's named cell. So for each cell I'm going to provide four properties. The first property we'll call row number and then the second property we'll call column number. These are integers. They tell the computer which row and column that the cell is located on the board. So in our example, it will be a number from zero to seven. So we have eight squares on each side. Then I'm going to have two Boolean values. One is called currently occupied, and the next is called legal next move. So each cell can be a true false for currently occupied. So if I select a square, such as I did in the example earlier, three comma three, that will tell the computer there's a chess piece, or probably the knight, set at that location. And then we'll do some calculations, some more algorithms, to go and calculate where the knight is allowed to move. And so we will flag those squares or those cells as a legal next move with a true false value. All right, so the next class that I want to create is going to be the board. So let's go and right click and choose a new class and I'm going to just name this as board. So the two main properties of board are going to be, first of all, the size of the board. So we'll make a property called size and make it an integer. The board will usually be eight, eight, si eight to a side, so an eight by eight chessboard. But we could make it other things. The second property is called the grid. And the grid is a two-dimensional array. And so the way you make a 2D array is to provide uh, square brackets with a comma. And that tells us that there's expecting two numbers here, so an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So the uh, size of the grid will probably be 8 by 8. So now it's time to create the constructor for the board. So when we create a new board, we're going to ask for one argument called uh, s, which is the size. So we'll assign the size equal to s. Then we will initialize a new two-dimensional grid. So the grid is what I'm going to call it. That's the property. So the grid will be a, an array of size, size squared, I guess. 
Then we want to initialize the values that are in the grid. So I'm going to create a for loop inside another for loop. We'll call that a nested for loop. And as we go through each grid location, I'm going to create a new cell there. Now you notice when I try to create a new cell with coordinates, it says that there is no constructor that matches those two arguments. So let's go back and revisit the cell class and create a constructor. So in our cell class, we're going to create a constructor that will require two arguments. We want the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Or you could interpret that as the row property and the column property. So row number and column number are assigned whatever is sent to x and y. So let's switch back into the board class, and now you can see that the cell properties make sense. So now I'd like to put in some comments to make sure that I understand what I'm actually trying to do. So this is a constructor. The initial board size is defined by this parameter s. Then we want to create a new two-dimensional array. So that is set here as new cell square bracket size. Then for these two nested for loops, I want to show that I'm filling these two, this 2D array with new cells. Each cell has a unique x and y coordinate, and so there will be 64 total cells on the average chessboard. So this is a good stopping point. What we've done so far is we've created a class that contains just the values. There's no actions yet, but we at least know what our chessboard is going to contain. Each cell has an x and y property, plus a few others, and then we have a board, which is a two-dimensional grid. In the next video, we're going to create some of the methods that will work on the board, such as setting a piece on the board and determining its legal moves, and then we'll be able to print the board using our console app. So let's work on that in the next video.